Hi everybody, welcome to All Games New and Old. I'm David Rodriguez. And I'm Hilary Rodriguez. And today we're going to go over the top 10 games we played in 2021. Notice that's not the top 10 games of 2021, because we don't pay that much attention specifically to when the game is made, as long as it's awesome. These are games that we played uh, this last year. Now, you might possibly notice, I don't know for sure, but possibly that um, the order of these might not even match how we had them in our top 50 of all time, if they were in that top 50 of all time. Um, and that could be for a variety of reasons. You know, sometimes, um, you know, we might have played a game that we think very highly of, but maybe the gameplay this year that we played of it wasn't that specifically memorable or what have you. Uh, or maybe just looking back, we just really remember uh, a different game more fondly for whatever reason, even though maybe we think overall the other one could be possibly better in the long haul. Who knows? Mm -hmm. We can talk about those as we get to them uh, if need be. But that's the deal. The best games we played in 2021. Some of them will be from 2021. Some of them will be from earlier because we don't have games from the future. How about that? And like our top 50 <laughs> games of all time, uh, we don't know what's on each other's list too. So Absolutely. So kind of surprising. Okay, so kicking off with our number 10. Uh, my uh, 10th best game I played this year was Dinos Not Assembled. Uh, this is a cool family game where you are trying to basically fill your museum with dinosaur skeletons and competing with the other people to do so. Um, you could steal from each other, but the security guard makes it so some per so somebody can't be stole from over and over and over again. It's a really smartly designed game, and it's really easy to learn, great for kids. Um, I just like it because it really is truly a game that we can play with our whole family, and, and it works really well. And I just think it's, it's super well designed. Uh, so... I just, yeah, I can't say enough good stuff about that game. We did a review of it. Please check it out. It's awesome uh, if you want to know more. But anyway, that is my number 10, Dinos Not Assembled. All right. Um, I'm going to put a little caveat on my list here real quick before I get going. Um, there are some games that we played that I really enjoy and like they're like always on the top of my list. I, if it's games that we like have played a lot throughout the years, I t didn't include them no. in my list. So, um, like, uh, Marvel Legend Legendary games are not on my list because we play it so often and we've played it for several years. So, um, I took some of those games off of my list. So, um, I tried to kind of limit my list to either new games that we played this year or we may have played it in previous years, but, like, we only played it a couple times. So, um, it still felt like a new game. So... Uh, my number 10 is going to be Pragna Kaput Ragni. Um, it's a Euro game um, based off of history, um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can win. It, you're trying to build a bridge, you're building the um, city walls, you're um, building the market. There's all sorts of different ways that you can win, and there's all sorts of different tracks. It's actually kind of... It, it's a lot to keep track of, but once you play a few few rounds, you, it's a really easy to, game to learn. Um, and I just really like that wheel mechanic of picking what uh, action you're going to be taking. That is super cool, for sure. All right, um, my number nine is Soldiers and Postmen's Uniforms. This is just a solo game, so she didn't play this one, I don't think, unless you snuck down no. and played it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I really only uh, kickstarted this game because it is a has a postal theme, and I work for the post office, so I don't know. I just felt like I had to, but <laughs> um, it's really good though. I'm not really into like historical war games, especially not you know the you know era since gunpowder historical uh, war game. Not usually my thing, but really interesting story in this one uh, where uh, it's the first day of World War II and the Germans uh, were invading uh, Danzig uh, and they wanted to take two buildings, one of them being the post office, and these, these people who were not soldiers for the most part had to hold up there and try to defend them, uh, defend the post office as long as they could. Uh, the real battle lasted a day, and um, at the end it didn't go so well for the postal employees. Uh, but in this game you're trying to get as many to survive as possible, and it was just, it, it's interesting because it's really just basically a tower defense style game, I think. But uh, after I played it enough to review it, I still was, like, thinking about it. I, I haven't gone back to play it yet, but I, I definitely will. I just, man, I don't know. Something about it, really good, and uh, I think it gave me more of an appreciation for uh, that situation in history. So if you like solo games, and it is purely a solo game, you cannot play it multiplayer, um, I highly recommend it. Soldiers and Postman's Uniforms is my number nine. 
Uh, my number nine is going to be Dinah's Not Assembled. Hey. So, um, it's, as he was saying, like it's a really fun family game. It's really easy for kids to learn and get a grasp of. They might not get all the nuances of, um, you know, tr of what you might need to do to actually win the game, but they understand it enough that they can still play it and have fun with it. Um, and even for adults, like it's, I think it's a really good intro level game to introduce people to games that aren't used, uh, that are, you know, maybe just familiar with like the Hasbro Shoots and Ladders, Monopoly, and kind of your more classic games. Um, it's a theme that people understand and it has a lot of the base mechanics that a lot of other um, more hobby game board games ha use. So it's a really good way to inter introduce people into the hobby board games. Absolutely. Uh, fantastic game. Um, speaking of crossovers, uh, <laughs> my number eight is Praga Kaput Regni. Um, it's funny that we have these so close to each other. Uh, you, everything she said, I love. I love the action selection wheel mechanic thing. It's so smart. I, I, there might be other things like it out there, but I haven't seen anything else like it. Uh, it also made me want to try more Euro games, which speaks, I think, very highly of it. I think part of that just has amazing table presence. It looks it looks stunning on the board. It's really a pretty game. There's a lot There's a lot going on on that board, and it kind of looks hyper-intimidating. And like she said, I think once you you know make yourself play a couple rounds of it, it's really not as crazy as it seems. It's, it's I don't want to say, it's definitely not a light game, and it, it probably might even be heavier than medium, but I, I feel like it's still easy to, to slip into that game and, and learn the mechanics. And um, because there's so many ways you can gain points and win, like I, I just, I want to go in and like, figure out like the way that works for me best and I still don't feel like I have it by any stretch but um really want to explore that game more um uh, that's uh my number eight yeah Project I, Project Project. I, oh, I, would, I was just gonna say um as a like tip for if you're teaching someone to play that game um pl just uh, try not to just explain all the rules to them because yeah. it's gonna be really overwhelming just play it play through a couple rounds so that they can see how the mechanics work and then re restart and then actually play the game. Yeah. Um, cause it's, it's, I think, I feel like it's really one of those games that you learn a lot better just by playing it rather than trying to go, go through all the rules because there's so many mechanics in it. hundred percent agree. Actually, um, I want to put an honorable mention in right here as well that I almost stuck on my list, uh, with, uh, the gallerist. Uh, the reason why it's not higher is we've only played it twice. Um, and it's another game where there's like a lot to try to figure out. Um, but you know, I don't, I, I think, um, in a weird way, Praga Kvot Regni has helped me kind of prepare for that even heavier, crazy game where there's a, a ton of stuff going on. But, um, I just wanted to give it an honorable mention because I agonize over putting it on the list, but I decided we hadn't played it as much and, and, um, I don't think either one of us feel like we've got a great yeah. feel for that big old monster. Yeah, but anyway, that's, uh, that's just that with it. That's what it is, so. Uh, so my number eight is going to be Marvel United. Um, it's just, it's a really fun Marvel uh, universe game. Um, I really like the chibi models. I know some people don't like the chibi artwork, but I, I think it's really cute. Um, and it's, and it's a fun, it's a fun game too. It's not just, here's a game that's Marvel. Like, if it was skinned anything else, I think I would still enjoy, enjoy it. Um, it just has a little bit of an added bonus because it's Marvel themed, but... Um, I really enjoy it, and I think it has a lot of replayability because you can change the characters and change the bad guys and change some of the locations and some of that. So. Yeah, definitely. That's also, I mean, that'd be a, that's a great family level game mm -hmm. too, but that, you know, people who are just playing with kids can also enjoy. So I didn't follow quite the same um, rules as she did in making <laughs> the list. Uh, my number seven, I did put... Uh, Legendary, a Marvel deck building game. Uh, the reason being, I, I probably would have left off this list too, except for like, we we did the, um, or are doing, depending on when I decide to release everything, the uh, review for uh, the base game plus the Annihilation expansion. And I don't, I just so love the scheme we played in the Annihilation <laughs> expansion, where you're, you know, you're like humanity on trial or whatever it's called that like i was like man that was so cool i want to do that again with like different with the like, heroes and villains i know better but just yeah. like use the same scheme i really really liked it and i just kept thinking about it so i, I can't <laughs> i can't reasonably leave it off this list so i guess if you want to get specific it's legendary with the annihilation expansion specifically that scheme Ta -da. anyway but it's it was great i just 
I want to play that. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I just want to do that scheme some more and just, you know, maybe do different heroes for it. But yeah. not that there's anything wrong with heroes in the box. I just don't know them as well. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's my number seven legendary Marvel deck building game with Annihilation Special, especially that scheme. <laughs> Uh, my number seven is Eon's End. Um, it's a pretty new game. I think it... Well, it's new for us. It's I think new it's for been us. out... It... I want to say 2016. I don't know if I'm right about that. I'm, I'm making this up, but it's been out a few years. Um, but it's, it's a deck-building game, um, and um, you're... Um, I want to say priest, but that's not really... You're like wizard people. Yeah, and... so you have magic abilities, mm. um, and... You know, you collect different, and you're, it's a co-op game, deck builder game, where you have this main big bad guy, and then you have his minions that you're trying to um, take out, and you're trying to protect the city. And it's just, it was just a fun game, and I really enjoyed it, so I'll Definitely. play more of that. Absolutely. All right, my number six game we play this year is Summoner Wars Second Edition. Ah, oh, it's just so good. It's so good. <laughs> uh, I just like every faction feels very unique. The rules are honestly pretty dead simple to figure out. It's just the strategy is very complicated. I recently got like the new little set that has like Tundra Orcs and something else, some other kind of... <laughs> there's lots of else. Anyway, and I haven't even opened it yet, but... Um, I want to try those, but I still I want to try like all the combinations of everything, and that's going to become less and less possible as more of these things come out. But um, just so good, so fun. I think also easy to teach, but like just the strategy is is incredible in that yeah, game. Yeah, it's it's a fun game. Like it, it just barely got it got pushed off my list just yeah, barely. So yeah, um, it it was a fun game. Um, I do feel like some of the races might be a little unmatched with other ones um but maybe it's just we haven't learned all the tricks for that for those races so yeah i have a feeling more plays are gonna make things maybe seem a little even i know that the uh the faction that we thought was like the unstoppable force other people said is actually pretty weak so i think it's just uh, they're also the very straightforward uh, faction so i think maybe once we've mastered some of the other uh, tricks of the other ones maybe those will be a little more easy to deal with so i don't know we'll see but um, regardless, it's also not an extraordinarily long game, so even if you do get a weird matchup, it's not, I don't feel like it's that huge a deal, so, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, just really liked it, Summoner War 2nd Edition, uh, fantastic game. That's my number six. My number six is Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade. Um, if you like the anime, you're gonna like this game. Um, it, it really plays off of the show, it has the same, um, bad guys, from the show, a lot of the artwork is straight from the show. Um, it's a deck, it's another deck builder game. Um, it's, it's some people say it's kind of like a co-op, but it's not really because you're competing to see who can get the most uh, renowned or the most bounty. Um, and so it's really just uh, it's basically just when Vicious comes out that it kind of becomes a co-op. So it's almost it's like it's. Um, kind of all for one up until Vicious comes out and then when Vicious comes out it's like okay now we all gotta get in here or yeah. we're all gonna lose so but you still want to get them more than anybody else did. Yeah. like it, it's it's weird like thematically you have the same goal but I think in gameplay wise you're still pretty much competing yeah um straight across so but yeah it's pretty uh, yeah and one of the mechanics I really enjoy it enjoy it in that game is that is the fact that each character has two abilities, and one of the abilities anybody can use if you're in the same spot. So, like, if you're playing as Faye, you can still use Ed's ability. You can still use Ed's ability, one of Ed's abilities, um, as long as you're in the same spot as Ed. Um, and I think that that's kind of a cool uh, mechanic that I haven't seen too much in other games. Yeah, totally agree. I like that a lot too. Awesome. Okay, so my number five was The Menace Among Us. This is a game in which you are on a ship that is losing oxygen and power, and you're trying to you know, get everything up to a, a survivable level, but someone on your ship with you is actually working against you. Why they want to suffocate and die in a ship? 
I don't know, but <laughs> uh, I assume they have another plan. Uh, but you know, like I love the trader mechanics in games, but so many of those games are really quite long. It can be hard to get them to the table, especially with people who maybe aren't so sure about the trader mechanic thing. Uh, but The Menace Among Us is really pretty dang quick of a game. Um, and I think because it's so fast, it's it's a lot easier to like have some kind of like you know playful uh, talk and accusations. It's it has the tension, but it's it feels less serious because you're not almost you're not like okay we're gonna play this for like three hours so we got to make sure we know and you know it, it, it I don't want to say it's not impactful because it definitely is but like it's I don't think anyone is gonna come away with as as feel bad a thing if they get screwed at the end uh, because of the traitor it's it's different than some of the other games which I still yeah. like a lot uh, but I like how quick this one plays to get you know a similar sort of experience it's just fun I highly recommend it uh, it's it's great. Yeah, in general, I'm not a fan of the trader mechanic in games, um, but it didn't bother me as much in this one um, because it is quick. And also, like, even if you are the trader <laughs> or get accused of being the trader and you get um, sent on the outputs, I don't remember what it's called, um, like, you can still actually do, you can still play some cards and still play. It's not like, oh, well, I've been outed, so now I'm out of the game yeah. and just watching them play. So. Um, you can still kind of have fun, even if you are kicked out of the group. Definitely. Yeah, very cool. So, um, My number five is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Um, I just I really like that game uh, <laughs> a lot. And um, I, I, like, I like how um, compact it is and streamlined they've made that game. Um, I like that the maps are just in a book, so we don't have to bring out these really big lots you know, we don't have 50 game tiles that we're trying to <laughs> sort through to find the next piece that we need. Um, and I, and I'm enjoying the story line so far that we've been playing too. So I'm excited to play more of that. Yeah. It's, it's such a brilliant way to teach a very big, pretty complicated game the way it just kind of like the first few missions, it just kind of like, well, here's some very basic rules and now we're going to add in this and now I'll add in this. Uh, great way to learn what I think would otherwise be overwhelming to a mm -hmm. lot of people, especially since this is sold in, like, Target. If they had, you know, if they, I mean, regular glue paint was a lot, they wouldn't have it in Target. But even if they did have that and just, like, did it the same way, well, here's all the rules, go play now, I think people would be returning that thing left and right, thinking that it's something they could just pick up and, and do easily. But with the way they did it, man, it's it's a brilliant, yeah. uh, brilliant thing. For yeah. sure. All right. <clears throat> So, my number four was And End. Uh, Showed up in your list earlier. Uh, you know, I saw the. I, I love deck building games, which I said in just about every video in which I could squeeze that in. Um, I saw the review of this, uh, probably the Dice Hair review a while back, probably when it came out, I don't remember. But, um, And I saw the art from this as they had it, and I was like, no, 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 it just doesn't look very pretty. I'm not too into it. There's a lot of other deck builders. So, I kind of ignored it. And uh, then I I was listening to uh, the Board Game Barbecue podcast, and one of the hosts on there, Sarah, was just like raving about this game. And she didn't know this, but she was talking me in to finally buying and <laughs> trying this game. And I'm so glad I did, because for one, I think the art's great. Yeah. I don't know what the problem is. I know, I was, I, was having, I was surprised when you said that. <laughs> I don't know what my issue was. I don't know if it's just the distance, or if I just, maybe my taste of it. I don't remember what it was. But either way, I think the art's really good, so I don't know what my problem was with that. And... Um, I think also I was like, a deck builder where you don't shuffle? I don't know. Sounds kind of stupid. It's not kind of stupid. It's kind of awesome. Uh, because even though, it, it, I mean, unless, I at least can't remember everything I have in uh, all the decks, but I can think, I can say, well, I want these two cards to be close together, so maybe I could play it in such a way where those will come out close together. It gives you more of an ability to kind of plan or, or know what's going to come up. And you could still get it wrong, but I mean, you have a little more control over it. It's so neat. And... We've only played against the one um, big bad boss guy so far, and my understanding is each boss somehow like the, the you need to really incorporate different strategies. So I'm really excited to try those and uh, just experience the difference in the different bosses, the different characters you can play as. Uh, I just I'm blown away by it, and um, this is both good and bad. It's good because yay, great game. Bad because it has a lot of expansions. <laughs> There's two sequels and a legacy version. We're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I mean, it's good. It's so good, but if I liked it a little less, I could be like, well, you know, well, that's fine. But I don't know. <laughs> Unless my opinion of this just drops badly. 
<sighs> Sorry, bank account. <laughs> anyway, that's my number four, Aeon's End. Uh, my number four is going to be H.H. H. Holmes' uh, Murder Castle. Um, it's, um, it is a game that we have played prior to this year, but we've only played it a, a couple times, so um, I went ahead and added it to my list because we played it a lot more this year. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy it even more than the... <laughs> more now um i just i actually like that spanning map on this game um and because it kind of because it fits fits so well in with the theme um you know there's and um i just i like that each character had like even though you're pretty much all doing trying to do the same thing um each character has a special way that you can use once in the game so that makes it a little bit different um you know, and you, the starting um, items that you've collected is a little bit different. And then just depending on how many players, HH Homes moving around the castle is going to be different each time. Mm -hmm. So I like each time we play it, it feels a little bit different, even if we're playing the same characters. Yeah, this came out on Kickstarter, and I, I know I, I've said very often I don't like delve deep into the details, but I can't tell you how much I didn't delve deep into the details. <laughs> I, I was like, in HH Homes games, and it. And it and it's coming out on Kickstarter, cool. Backed. I didn't even look at anything else. H.H. Holmes game, backed. This could have been garbage. It could have been <laughs> so bad. And it's not. It's so good. I'm really glad that I took that particular risk. So, well worth it. Yeah. Awesome game, for sure. All right, my my next two games, <clears throat> I'm going to bet are going to be crossovers. I don't know yet. That means <laughs> I think they're both high up on Earth. But we'll see. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I bet you anything. But we're not uh, doing two at a time. So we're doing number three. Number three on my list is Bullet Heart. Uh, Bullet Heart is this crazy game that's supposed to be reminiscent of a, uh, a bullet hell or shoot 'em up game, and your various anime women who all have a different theme to them. And it's kind of also like Tetris because pieces are coming down your board that are going to hit you, but you can send them over there if you can get certain patterns to show up and. And manipulate certain ways. It has a soundtrack that's amazing. It's super, if you play uh, Time, which is, I think, my preferred way, it's super, super tense and crazy. You play co-op too, which is also awesome. Sometimes when you have both ways to play, you end up just playing one because they, you know, one's good and one's, eh. But I think both of these, these modes are great in this game. Um, yeah, it's killer. It's an awesome game. I already got one of the little expansions. Bullet Orange, and Bullet Star is coming whenever that comes out. So anyway, they hooked me. <laughs> they hooked me. Dang it. It is a fun game. I And like I do, I've said it a few times, I, I do like how it reminds me of Tetris, because yeah. I really like the game Tetris. However, it didn't actually make my list. What? So. Okay. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm very surprised, but it's, it's okay. Uh, my number three is going to be Twisted Fables. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a head-to-head, -head, um, deck-building game, um, and it's a game that you're playing as, uh, different fairy tale heroines, Snow White, Red Riding Hood, uh, Little Mermaid, uh, Matchstick Girl, there's a whole bunch of them, yeah. um, and we got the, um, Kickstar one, so we got some extra characters, too. Um, but it's just, it's a really fun fast-paced um game and e like there's some characters that are very like kind of from the get-go they're really good and then there's others that are kind of a slow build um and so i that's another game where i think depending on who you're playing you might have some mis <coughs> mismatches where they the characters might not be very good fighting against each other um because if you have like someone that's really good up front versus someone that's kind of a slow build, um, you might not be able to actually be able to turn around. Um, but I, it's a, it was just, it's a really fun game, and I'm excited to see what expansions they come out with. Mm -hmm. Me too. Okay, my number two game is Quirky Circuits. Um, I bought this entirely because of who designed it, Nikki Valens. Uh, otherwise, when I looked at it, I was like, nah, it doesn't really appeal to me. Your count on a Roomba. Yay. <laughs> but that's not the only thing you are in this game. There's a lot. There's a few different robots. But, wow, this game is fun. Wow, it's so much fun. <laughs> we played it with a couple <laughs> different couples. And it's this crazy co-op programming, but you can't really communicate other than saying beep boop. But you could go, like, beep boop, which 
doesn't really mean anything, but you think it does. And like, <clears throat> it's just so great. Uh, even when you disastrously fail, it's just <laughs> hilarious. Uh, I, it, the production quality on this is amazing. Like the book yeah. of scenarios is so fantastic. The little models are really cool. Uh, I just, I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, and, it, and it gets rid of the problem in co-op games of having an alpha gamer. You can't mm -hmm. have someone really telling you because they don't know what you have and they can't communicate anyway other than beep boop. So, um, fantastic co-op game. Really, really love it. I don't, I don't think there's going to be expansions for it in the future. I could be wrong, but, um, we have plenty of scenarios to still go through uh, and I don't mind repeating them. So, yeah. uh, lots of gameplay for us in that game in the future. So quirky circuits is my number two. Um, my number two, um, I'm kind of lumping two games in together here. Um, one is one that we've had and played a couple times, but we've played it more this year. And then there was a new version of it that came out and that's going to be the horrified, uh, oh. games, um, and the horrified, uh, American monsters. Um, I just, I really enjoy those games. It's a co-op game, um, where you're playing as citizens of a town and, um, you're trying to defeat these different monsters. Um, the original Horrified is like classic Universal monsters. The new American version that came out this year is more like cryptids. Um, and they play very similar to each other. So if you don't have either of them, um, just whichever theme sounds better to you, um, get that one. Um, but, um, I just, I, but they, but all the monsters play differently. So if you already have one, so if you have one and you really like it, then I would get the other one too. Um, cause they do play, <clears throat> all the monsters do play differently. So, um, they're just a really fun co-op game. And I like that you can kind of adjust the difficulty level of them too. That one narrowly, narrowly missed my list. Like it was one of the last ones I was agonizing over and, and depending on the day it easily could have made it just depending but whew, so good yes horrified for sure all right my number one uh favorite game that we played this year is twisted fables which you talked about earlier <laughs> it's a deck building game that mimics a 2d fighter but you have a uh, fairy tale people in it and it's fantastic uh when i kickstarted it i'm like oh cool a deck builder and it's got great art neat good enough for me <laughs> um and it is that, but it is also so much more than that. I love how the game feels like you're you're leveling up as you get like certain abilities to come out, and it becomes like permanent powers for you. I love how each character does seem to feel so dang different. Mm -hmm. It's it's insane. Uh, so like she was mentioning with um, how certain characters are maybe better early game and some late game. Like one of the games we played, I was Match Girl, and she was a Little Mermaid in the beginning. Like I was really dominating, and I I was like, oh my gosh, like I am. Like I can, I wasn't even, get, I wasn't even taking damage. Well, I, took, I would take damage, but I could heal it right back. And I was like, I am just crushing her this yeah, game. Yeah, we almost called the game, and I was like, eh, let's let's just try and push through because we wanted to play all the characters. So I didn't want to like restart that game. So. Yeah, but like Little Mermaid came back strong. Like she built mm -hmm. up, and then she suddenly was able to like, you know, come back from from being on the back foot the whole time. And I, I think you won that game. Yeah, I'm not sure, but like either way, I was like, oh wow, that's actually kind of cool because I actually felt like, oh, this isn't so good if I can like utterly smash this character with you know with the character i was playing but it didn't turn out that way and i actually kind of like that because it means like now if we ever play that matchup again like i i can i can't feel comfortable like yay i'm just smashing her early on i have to think about like okay but she's going to be tough later so yeah i think that gonna... ended up being one of my favorite gameplays that yeah I did. it was awesome it was a longer one but it yeah. was it was really good so uh, i really like it um there's they've at least said there's going to be expansions i think they said maybe in 2022 they're going to do some um they recently did um they kind of resold it on game found and so i got some of the mats and one of them comes with like a stage card which is going to be part of the new thing where mm. you could choose a stage to play on and then i don't know how but it can affect certain things in the game so i'm excited about that because that yeah. one is a i want to say milan focused stage i don't know it's specific to one of the characters so i think it's going to be like a fighting game where like oh yeah this is the this person level and that's that person's level so uh, I'm just excited to see where I could take it. In the meantime, um, I still feel like there's there's plenty to experience in that game, even without adding more stuff. So I'm thrilled about it. Uh, seriously, one of the best games uh, I've played maybe ever. It's great. Uh, Twisted Fables. I hope it gets all the love it deserves. So uh, My number one is Corky Sort. Uh -huh. um, it's such a unique game, um, mm -hmm. and it's so much fun. And, like, it's, you know... 
as you, you know, he was saying, like, you can't have, like, that power gamer that's trying to control what everybody does because we don't know, we can't talk about it, we can't strategize. Um, it can lead to some, you know, confusion and mess ups because, like, you know, someone, like, will lay something out and then, like, you're trying to figure out what they're doing or, like, you might be, like, how, like, like, you might be able to be like, okay, I know I need to play the second card down. Like, someone just has to play one card in front of me and then I'll put my card down. But then the person that puts down that first card, they lay down three cards. And then you're like, oh, okay, now I don't know what to do. Um, and everybody has to play one card. And so if you're, like, if you have the strategy going in and then that gets messed up, then, like, you have to try and figure out what card you can maybe play and not mess things up. Mm-hmm. You're probably gonna mess things up, but <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know it's uh, may have already been messed up anyway. So it, it's just a it's a really fun game. Um, it's to me it's uh, it's almost similar to Gloomhaven: Jaws of the Lion because it's all contained into a book. All the maps are there. It has that build up as well, where mm -hmm. it's like okay, here's the first scenario, and you're really just learning the really basic mechanics of the game. And then you add additional things and build up on the, these layers and the game becomes harder and more tricky. And it ha to me, it has a lot of replayability. Um, and then it's just, it's a fun and easygoing game too. Yeah. So it's not a big heavy game. Um, you know, we <coughs> did one game night where we were planning on doing a big heavy game and we decided <laughs> to try that first. And we just spent the entire night playing that game over and yeah. over again. Yeah, we <laughs> so. did. I don't know how many games that we played that night, but it was, yeah. it was a lot, and I did not regret it at all. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I have not played everything Nikki Valens has done, but I'm starting to get convinced that Nikki Valens can do no wrong. So, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Don't disappoint me, Nikki. <laughs> um, it's okay if you do. These, these games are still great, so it doesn't even really matter. So, uh, anyway, um, fantastic. Those are the top ten games that we played this year. Have you played any of those? What do you think of them? And what are some of your top 10 games you played this year? You can give me a whole list if you want to, or just tell me your favorite game you played this year. I would love to hear that, too, because I'm always curious, and maybe it'll give me some ideas on things that I probably shouldn't buy, but probably will at some point. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, I hope that this list has been helpful to you. Maybe it'll help you decide to try out some of these games in the future. Uh, if it has, please hit like and subscribe, and click the little bell icon so you can know about the next time we put out a video. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you all around the table again at All Games New and Old. Bye. Bye. Together. Something fun. To fall. <laughs> Blooper reel. Yay! <laughs> You're playing as classic fairy tale heroines. Um, Little Mermaid, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, Red Robin, Match... Robin Hood? Or, I said Red Robin. You said Red Robin? No. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Sorry. That was funny. Uh, <laughs> no, you got me completely as I did. Um, <laughs>